Okay, so here's the plan uh, to kind of continue to wind this out. We have one more speaker that we want to introduce um, named Kristen Dickerson, uh, who is a kind of uh, Dr. Kristen Dickerson, um, who has um, a couple of kind of direct pay price transparent solution companies that she's nurturing. And she wants to introduce herself. She's going to sit on a panel uh, that's going to be moderated by Clint Flanagan, who I think is in the audience. Um, so we're going to have her come up. And, and provide some background on herself. Um, and then I want to introduce Nelson Griswold, who is also going to sit at the panel after she's done. And then Clint Flanagan will take us home on a panel discussion. Kristen. Thank you, Michael. Hi, everybody. So how the heck did a radiologist from Texas make it to the Hint Summit? Uh, that's the big question. And um, I, you know, I think my, my path as a physician uh, led me here. Um, I am, you know, I've been doing this since DIRT as well, and when I started, uh, when I was in residency in Houston, there were no female radiologists in any of the major radiology groups, any of the radiology groups with established um, hospital practices. And I was offered, my third year of residency, I was offered a job with one of these prestigious groups, and my fourth year, they backed out. They, they were worried about maternity care. And so I ended up taking a job at an equally prestigious uh, multi-specialty group, Diagnostic Clinic of Houston. And, um, you know, they're, the multi-specialty groups that practice that way are the good guys in health, or some of the good guys, the good guys like you guys um, in healthcare. They're the ones who are in network. They are, you know, they have decent cash prices. They're offering, um, and, you know, convenient ancillaries in network, non-hospital based pricing. They're independent. Um, and they frequently have relationships with independent specialists. So they're, they're some of the good guys in medicine. Um, the reason I bring this up is because I, I went off to Diagnostic Clinic of Houston with the idea that I would never have to worry about business. I would um, just get to practice medicine. And two years into my tenure there, I um, was brought a box of tickets. We called them yellow tickets. And it was the work that we did on the, doing hospital coverage um, nights and weekends, the stuff that took me away from my kids. And the business manager brought me this huge box of these yellow tickets. And these were all the ones we couldn't charge for because the hospital wasn't providing us the demographics or the diagnostic information to do so. Literally, it was probably a million and a half dollars in tickets. And so I, I learned the business of medicine very quickly. And I was president of the clinic within a few years. And the reason I bring that up is because that was my experience as a self-funded employer. And um, we had 50 doctors, we had 350 employees, and um, we actually were pretty innovative for those days. We would incentivize our employees to use diagnostic clinic services whenever that was appropriate, and they would have no copay, no deductible, be subject to none of that. They or their families that they used our care. If they went outside of the clinic, which was frequently appropriate, they were subject to their copays and deductibles. And so that was kind of an early free market healthcare plan. Um, that, there, there are also other reasons that being in a multi-specialty group is, has been important in my career. One is collaboration, and we've heard that word today. And it's one of the things that's lacking um, in healthcare these days. Um, the the multi-specialty group for whom I work now um, actually pays me extra to be on site there and go over studies with them. And they come down and, you know, they'll come down with a big stack of charts and then they do they do not use EMR, <laughs> um, but they come down with a big stack of charts and a bunch of patients to go over, and we, we spend our time doing that. And I think it makes a big difference in their patients' health care um, that we do that. So anyway, moving forward, let's see if I can. Um, one of the, uh, that slide is not working. Okay. Um, one of the things that's already been brought up very much today um, is, is this, you know, group of patients and a group of people in our uh, country, actually the majority of people in our country, who have these wonderful, quote-unquote, healthcare plans that they can't afford to use. And I think since we're talking semantics today, like doctors and being paid, um, I think one of the really great words is, or, you know, terms is functionally uninsured. And I think that really sums up what this, what, what's happening in healthcare in our country. So I just stuck this in because I think it, it's, it's a little out of sequence, but I think that's a really important term for us to be using in healthcare. Um, let's go back to about 2012. Um, in Houston, we had about a 20% reported unemployment rate. Um, with the number of, um, you know, illegal aliens we had in Houston who were not reported, I think that was probably higher. 
Um, we had deductibles that were skyrocketing. Um, we had hospitals, and I'm actually on the advis National Advisory Board of the Association of Independent Doctors. We had hospitals gobbling up all the independent doctors, gobbling up the independent ASCs, gobbling up um, the big groups of doctors, and also um, acquiring, they acquired the largest outpatient imaging um, chain, imaging center chain. And so people were really left in Houston with out-of-network imaging centers, and they were left with hospital-based imaging centers. Hospital-based care in this country right now costs 2.5 to three times greater than the care provided by an independent physician. So what that means is if you go see an independent physician, the cost of care all the way up the ladder, including if you have to go see a specialist and have testing done or have surgery done, the cost of that care is about a third that if you go see a primary care doctor who is um, employed by or subsidized by a hospital system. That's a huge differential. So anyway, in 2012, um, I decided I was going to conquer that problem, and my husband and I went and built a pro forma to do an imaging center. And that was going to be about $3 million, and we looked at volumes, and we looked at the imaging centers around town, most of which were out of network granted, and they were about 50% capacity. And those numbers didn't work. I was going to be charging as much as everybody else. But that 50% capacity, uh, it just a light bulb went off in my head. And I got the idea of buying the excess, the unutilized time at the other imaging centers at a discount, um, you know, having that pushed to my PAC system and our radiologist to assure quality, our radiologist would read those studies. And so I was able to pass huge discounts on to patients. And um, as, as this grew, you know, I really, with my background in multi, you know, and having been a self-funded employer, I thought, why don't I build a network of these that employers could use to hold down their imaging costs? And so, you know, quickly we, we have become state, you know, in the past six years, we've, we've gone statewide, we're expanding beyond Texas now. Uh, but it's been a really great business model and it's really re-energized me to, you know, in, in my practice of medicine. This is the, the type of cost savings we can achieve and it's important to point out a few things here. Bill Hennessy, um, who has a software called Pratter, that's a price transparency tool um, based on claims data. Um, has identified the top um, radiology procedures that are shoppable. These are the ones that are, that are the most commonly utilized and have the biggest variability in price. And so he, he, he you know, showed me the, the top, I think there are about, there's seven of them there that were the most shoppable radiology codes. And so he put my average up against that. And the important thing to point out there is that his are just facility fees. Those are unbundled prices. They do not include the radiologist intern. Um, mine are actually bundled. And the other important thing to point out about my pricing is that that is an average. Now, 80% of that is in Houston. So the, although we have a statewide network, um, Houston is big. Houston, Dallas actually has the highest cost of health care of any city in the country um, for employers, and Houston is third. So we're doing pretty well there, um, given the cost of care in our community. And the other thing is that I, I like Jeremy Smith, work with some TPAs and some um, well, interest to, to name one, and they have a, a variety of plans. And so some, in some of their plans, the patients are, are, are paying out of pocket for the imaging. Those patients are highly incentivized to go to my $250 MRI center, even if they have to drive. Other patients have an HSA that might, um, you know, that might basically be paying for the imaging, or are the employer may be incentivizing them to use green imaging by having no out-of-pocket cost if they go to green imaging. They're going to pay, you know, be subject to their copay and deductible if they go to Memorial Hermann. And so, um, so, this, so those patients need a variety of imaging centers. They need somewhere close to home. They need, you know, they want the highest quality centers, you know. And I, I, when I say quality, I'm going to tell you our imaging quality is uniform. Our interpretation quality, our interpretation quality is uniform. Parts of town differ. Um, you know, how old or new a center is. You know, all of those things impress patients to different degrees. You don't care so much if you're getting the 250 dollar MRI, you know, if the floors are marble. But, you know, if you're paying a lot more out of pocket for it, you usually want nicer surroundings. So anyway, there's a lot of variability there, but that's still the average um, of our pricing. Um, so I still came up with a problem. So I've got all these patients coming to me and, and having these exams, and many of them have high deductibles or don't have insurance, and then they have an ACL tear. 
And then, you know, they email our ASCO radiologist and say, what the heck do I do next? How do I find a low-cost provider? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I was making, you know, building those relationships with cash pay doctors. The surgeons are tougher to, to reach out to on that, um, on that front. But I was really struggling um, with finding providers who knew how to take cash, who, who were set up in their practice to take cash. And so um, I had a, a, a friend from a women's forum in which I participate. And she, we went to coffee and... She said, you know, I have a friend who's talking just like you. Let me introduce you all. And she introduced me to one of the smartest guys I know, who is a DPC doctor, Geetinder Goyle. And um, he was having the same problem with his DPC practice. He was, you know, taking great care of his patients, but, you know, 10% of them needed additional care. And so we started tossing about the idea of forming, and this is another bad word, a network of like-minded physicians um, who could provide lower, you know, high quality, lower cost care in our community. And um, we start, founded the Free Market Medical Association um, chapter in, we co-founded that in Houston, and we developed some more relationships that way, but we quickly saw that we needed to formalize it. There are, there are a lot of problems that have been discussed today in how you work and working together collaboratively and cohesively, you know, part of it is IT infrastructure. Um, part of it is payment. You know, who's paying you, and um, and how are they paying you, and how do we make those transactions? You know, amongst the doctors, you know, her geographically, uh, um, you know, apart from each other. And um, so we came up with the idea of, of truly formalizing this into what we're calling Lucent MD. And we've brought together, we have a, a wide variety of surgeons, I think probably surgical subspecialties representing 90% of what needs to be done in the outpatient world. We have medical uh, specialists, um, even pediatric um, subspecialists. Um, we have bundled imaging. We have bundled, cert we have several ASCs that are participating with us. We have both bundled surgeries and we have reference-based surgeries because we're, we, some of the, the centers are not at the sophistication level to do the bundles yet. They don't have great consultants for that yet. Um, you know, we will encourage moving that direction, but we did want at least something predictable. So we're using the major CPT code and coming up with a reference-based price for those. Um, and so that, that's been a, a really exciting development. But one of the things that we came to was that... We needed, a, we needed some payers who were going to pay us uniformly. Um, you know, Dr. Goyle had been encouraging his patients to um, use Liberty HealthShare. Well, that was working out great for him and his patients, but for me, I would bill them at what they said they were going to pay me, 170% of Medicare, which is great in the imaging world, and they would pay me at Medicare, and then I had to appeal to try to get the other 70%. Well, you know, that, that, that's not in my workflow. That's not, so, you know, I'm trying to be a cash-based provider cash-based provider, and that's just not something that was working well for me. So that, that, that was just one of many incidents that we found that we kind of needed a uniform payment system. And so we found, you know, we've seen along the way that there are different ways to do this. If you're a DPC doctor and you just want to simplify your practice, um, you know, Sidera is a great solution. I love that, that Sidera is going to be readily available through Hint. And you can incur, you know, even incentivize your patients to all be, you know, on the same catastrophic policy. You become an expert in it. It unifies your workflows. I think that's a tremendous opportunity. There are other opportunities um, with um, companies that are doing really innovative healthcare plans, either regionally or nationally. New Era Life is one of those. Um, you know, and some of their agents have cafeteria plans for benefits. And DPC, you know, a, a broker in your area could easily add DPC, your DPC practice as one of those options on that cafeteria plan. Um, and then, you know, the innovative TPAs, which we had talked about. Um, and again, innovative healthcare plans where you start partnering with them. I mean, a lot of what I do and a lot of what I spend my time on now is education. And, a, you know, a lot of that is um, educating employers. It's educating employees. It's educating other doctors. And it, there's a huge investment, like Jeremy can tell you, in, in, in partnering with the TPAs. And, you know, you go on the road with them. Um, but it does pay off in the long run because you can help, like, cut out some of the gaps in coverage and eliminate, you know, eliminate the overlapping coverage. Um, so that's a tremendous opportunity. And then the, one, the choice that we've made, which is moving on to a whole, you know, a whole direct care product, 
Um, and that's where we're trying to wrap together both payment, or, or wrap all together, payment, uh, this network of physicians, bundled surgeries, and bundled imaging, and DPC. And it will have DPC at the core, and which is, what, you know, I remember Dave Chase's healthcare pyramid. I mean, DPC is, is you know, has got to be the basis of a healthy um, healthcare system. So anyway, um, the health, a shout out to Hint. Um, you know, there are great software solutions out there. We all need, um, we need, Asserta has a great payment platform. Um, I don't know, I'm still looking for the best referral management, task management um, software. Um, those are all tools you're gonna need to do this. And just, I'm out of time, but the last thing I wanna say is one of the things we're doing is we're having these physicians sign a document that says that they are agreeing to the tenets of our network. And that's gonna be improved collaboration, more time with patients, and better communication. They've, they've looked, they don't have good habits anymore. And that's one of the things, you know, if, you, if we're gonna give you ease of, um, you know, if we're gonna make things easier for you, you gotta make things better for the patients and be an advocate with us. Thank you guys.